absolutely stunning. This is later than when I come out Sunday mornings. The sun is still down below the hill. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh no, our flag is all messed up. Good morning, Kim. This is Brian Warner at the Churchtown Church of God. Furnace is running. Fantastic stuff. Let's go fix our flag, shall we? It's probably frozen. Probably got wet. <laughs> nope. There we go. There you go. Oh, sick. Okay, there we go. Good morning, Susan. You see our frozen pond down there? That was from the rain. The farmer who bought the field said that he was going to put in a giant French drain down there to help minimize that at least. But he hasn't yet, so we still have it. We have seen that flooding all the way up to the pavilion before. All the way up just below the uh, fire pit there. You see how it slopes? So it has come up that far and then it comes up into the neighbor's yards. So that's pretty, that was just an overnight rain. What was that, uh, Friday? Friday into Saturday when it froze? It's beautiful, isn't it? Just unbelievable, just beautiful. So there we go. The chickens, if you see the chickens, they're still, the ladies are still cooped up. <laughs> cooped up, get it? It's a chicken coop, everyone. <clears throat> you can hear them in there because they hear me. So, anyway, it's gorgeous. I'm walking around in a fleece. Just fantastic. Everybody's furnaces, wood stoves are going. You can smell it in the air. You can see it. Oh, just fantastic. Don't you love small town life? I love small town life. I'm a small town kid. Oh. Born and raised. <clears throat> I had a friend from Virginia, uh, Judd, with me because uh, we had that conference. And so he spent some time here with us in Churchtown and all of that. And we just went from Churchtown and then I showed him Boiling Springs. Then we went over to Mount Holly. <clears throat> and we were all on our way to Gettysburg. But of course, on Gettysburg, in going to Gettysburg, you have to go through Biglerville. So it's just like small town, small town, small town. I'm like, yep, that's who I am. Oh, yes, good morning. What a fantastic day yesterday. What a beautiful and relaxing day. I got a little excited teaching yesterday, didn't I, Xavier? But that's okay. A little excited. See, I'm trying to do this thing where I, I sit on the stool and we talk. But I get a little excited. Now, two weeks ago, I didn't get that excited. You have to excuse the camera shaking while I get things ready for turning on the lights. Good morning, sir. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, anyway. Oh, yes. So I got a little excited yesterday. I was all sweaty. Let me give you a sanctuary, a picture of the sanctuary here. And then I'll go get my chair. Is that okay? Is that fair? So hang in there, folks. Let me turn that around. Whoops. There we go. There you go. I'll be right back. Well, actually, I'm not going far. Just over here. Got to pack up my guitar today. <clears throat> it is time for its winter stringing. We're going to get the guitar strung today over at my buddies at JW Music in Carlisle. Shout out <clears throat> to my friends there. <clears throat> and that's going to be my big adventure for today, other than perhaps, I know, I know how crazy my life is. I know how jealous you're going to be if I do tell you what I'm really going to do today on my day off. I'm going to go to JW Music, get my guitar strung, and then I'm probably going to go get dog food at Nisley's. I know... You're like the life of a megachurch pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to take my private jet. I may humble myself to drive. 
That's right. That's right. I may humble myself to drive, to go get my guitar restrung and get my dog food. Right? Normally, again, as a mega church pastor, I have people. I have people, and I'll be like, you, go get my dog food for me. You, get this instrument restrung. But you know what? Sometimes you got to come down off the mountain, right? You got to come down off that mountain, and you got to try to relate to the people. So I'm going to get in there today. <laughs> I know, right? Your talk with empty pews. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Is that it? <clears throat> you, oh, you guys love the bells. Oh, with Xavier. I thought that was Deb, but yeah, the bells. I, they're not even all out still. We put. We had to put them away for the wedding. Well, not put them away so as much as we just had to find another place for them because we were moving the pianos around. And I, there are still bells sitting around here, um, but we love them. If you uh, if you uh, are an attendee here at Churchtown. Many of the attendees have uh, given us bells uh, to ring after the fellowship time. The time of fellowship has come to an end, whenever that is. Um, I am very curious sometimes to never ring the bell and just, Good morning, Judd. I was just talking about you and how we were moving through uh, um, small town after small town after small town. I said, that's who I am. You know, I'm not a, a suburban guy. I'm not an urban guy. I'm not necessarily a country guy. I guess a lot of people, good morning, Steve, would, uh, oh, you're saying good morning to Judd, <laughs> you guys. But um, uh, I guess a lot of people would call me or call this country, and we call it a little country church, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. This area is all about the little small towns, and now they have kind of grown together. You know, even you look at Boiling Springs, Mount Holly, Church Town, there's the creeping small town sprawl, right, has co-joined the towns. You could probably maybe get from one town to the other on either back roads, maybe farm roads or roads through developments these days. So anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying I love it. I love small town life. Um, I lived in Carlisle the big metropolis of Carlisle for six months. Kelly and I lived there in our first apartment. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't, I didn't even like that. I didn't even like that. And that's not like city life or whatever, but the traffic, we were in an apartment downtown and the traffic and the emergency vehicles. And we, <laughs> we lived, and I won't tell the whole story because there's a lot of vulgarity um, that, that occurred so I won't tell you a lot of the stories here on the air, but we lived in, in, in down the was um, the gingerbread man. So it was only less than you know, maybe 50 yards down the alley. So we had entertainment all the time. We lived on the third floor and we had a little trellis that came out like the fire escape. And we could just hang out there on a Friday, Saturday night and just enjoy the show of all the people that were just inebriated and craziness. And some of the crazy stories were, were just hilarious. So <clears throat> anyway, I didn't even like that. So, oh my goodness, I'm getting all kinds of stuff. You know, that might be the um, furnace people. The furnace people are coming today. Shipley Oil, shout out to Shipley Oil. Um, those guys have been fantastic. Um, they uh, are coming to, they're going to be converting the entire heating system eventually, but they want to begin the process today with coming out and, and tr working on some of the switches and some of the peripheral things that won't affect the current uh, unit. And then they'll, whenever there's a break in the weather, they'll come in and, and swarm in and, and change out and swap out the broiler. But So yeah, I, I guess there is more going on today than I, than I thought. But uh, Jennifer and Lee and Liz, good morning, everybody. Dennis, my brother, that video this morning, I posted it. Um, I had seen it before. And if you haven't, go to my Facebook page and, and check out the, the video of the worship song, which, uh, again, it is sort of the natural culmination of this worship culture where we, we stand for the sake of standing 
we put our hands in the air for the sake of putting our hands in the air. And as long as you have some key words in these choruses that you repeat 50 times, grace, Jesus, something like that, the rest of it is pretty much non-theological nonsense. Um, and this video really portrays that to its natural culmination. And, and of course, it has a the straight man, what's well, a woman, the straight person in the video is like, I don't get this. What, what are you doing? Why are you worshiping artichokes and things, asparagus? And uh, Anyway, it's funny. You have to watch. Avocados. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so watch it. Um, what was it like to be a brother of Jesus? They're, they're <laughs> not to be um, stay in the same vein with comedy, but there was a comedy thing going along from that was going around making the, the Facebook rounds of the guy who said, what would it have been like to be a brother of Jesus? And of course, he's making all of the remarks about uh, Jesus performing miracles and doing things and being mom's favorite and all of this other stuff. Good morning, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I'm mega following. I hope I don't have any following. I hope that everything that I do and say in some way, shape or form points to me. Points to me. I just said it. Points to him, points to me, right there, him. But uh, do you remember that sermon I gave? I was telling Judd about it, Mary, where um, I was intentionally being a little bit belligerent-like, and then I got all ups upset with you guys because you weren't paying attention to me, and I went out and I got the ladder, and I put a ladder right in front of the altar here, right where I'm sitting, actually the one level up, and the, and the ladder climbed in front of the picture of Jesus and then I climbed up the ladder and I stood in front of Jesus and I was like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, and, and that was the essence, of course, of the sermon was that if you are involved in any uh, spiritual leader, teacher, guide, that sort of thing, pastor, uh, elder, that is pointing to themselves and not to our Lord and Savior, then get out, right? That's not what it's about. And that, that's what we're talking about too, the, the worship culture thing. You know, what are we worshiping? We talked about that a little bit yesterday as well <clears throat> and how we are built with that inside of us to worship. And, you know, we can make it like a laser focus on our Lord and Savior, or it can be a scattershot on, you know, our jobs, our relationships. Um, we can worship the things that we gather in life, that sort of thing. So we understand that. Non-hoodie, it's not a, uh, I don't think it's going to be a cleaning day today. I just um, was wearing this last night when I went to bed. So I threw it off and put it on the top of the pile. And then this morning when I woke up, I woke up and I put it back on. <laughs> so there's another glimpse inside the life of a mega church pastor. I normally, Xavier, and I have people who dress me. I'm like, today I want blue and white. And they're like, boom, there you go, sir. But, you know, I'm feeling very ordinary today. I want to relate to, to the folks out there. I don't know what I'm saying. So... Oh, yes. Small towns, small towns. So a brother of Jesus. The, the, the closest glimpse that we have is James and on a serious note. <clears throat> uh, you, there are all kinds of uh, crazy gosp gospels out there, gospel accounts of Jesus as a, yes, I do give my minions a day off. Every once, every 90 days, they have half a day off, Dennis. But... Um, just Monday morning. So hopefully old shaky starts and I can get my guitar into JW and um, go get my dog food for my beloved, my beloved hound dogs. Um, <laughs> see, Judd, I was trying to tell you how ADHD I am. I'm like, what? We've got five topics going, but that's okay. Okay. <clears throat> But don't you think that that's the most serious glimpse we have? And we understand that James, um, you know, became the pastor of the church in Jerusalem, a strong spiritual leader. They called him old camel knees because he was on his knees praying all the time. 
Uh, we understand the job that he had, how difficult it was, how it must have been. Like, I, I've related this before, like, um, you know, planting a Christian church in the middle of, you know, Baghdad, so to speak. I mean, it must have been uh, the intense pressure, borderline persecution all the time. And then, of course, there was persecution. So, I mean, w what can we gather from that? Strength, inspiration, Holy Spirit, inspiration, uh, a connectedness to, and a, a belief, um, a, a, de a, a desire to give your life in following, um, that sort of thing. And I do mean a desire. I chose that word. I mean, a desire to give your life. You're okay. You will walk forward knowing. And as we know, the apostles, as it were, and, and many of the early church leaders walked forward knowing that they would give their life more than likely, some for sure, more than likely, in the name of Jesus Christ to, to continue the growth of the early church. So now on the fun side of that, I, you know, I, I don't know. And, and we purposely don't know. But man, on the lighter side of that, to be Jesus's brother growing up, knowing the thing. I mean, did Mary share the stories? Did everybody know? I mean, it was pretty common knowledge like when it happened and then they took off and then they came back. I don't know, man. And I don't believe the accounts of Jesus as, you know, I mean, there are accounts out there, like I said, gospel writings, which that they call themselves and the, the, about the youth of Jesus Christ, about how he did show off, for lack of a better term, how he would, uh, one account is that he pushed his friend off the top of a building to intentionally kill him. And then he went down and then intentionally rose him, raised him from the dead. Things of that nature. I, it's not there. It's not in canon. I don't believe it. Um, and that just seems awfully. Uh -uh. So for my, not, not the Jesus that I have, that I know. So anyway, we'll find out one day. So anyway, that's where we are. We were in 1 Corinthians yesterday. It was an amazing morning. Um, teaching, talking about wisdom, sharing about wisdom. I talked about uh, information, the bombardment of information today. Information is the lowest form of understanding, of course. We just hear things, see things, and we are bombarded verbally, visually, uh, and by, via so many mediums, media, mediums today. There's so much information. The information superhighway. So what? That's the, you know, that's the raw data, if you will. I talked about knowledge and the knowledge that is gleaned from this information. As we put this information together, we can understand things. We have great knowledge about certain things. And that can extend to circuitry, to brain surgery, to the science of... Ditch digging. I mean, all of the above. The great knowledge that we have as we move forward. And then we talk about this wisdom. And, and we shared from scripture, the scriptural definition of wisdom, which isn't so much dictionary-like as it is discovered through Paul's teaching. Um, and throughout scripture, but we went to 1 Corinthians and we looked at Paul's teaching because the, this church in Corinth... Um, being immature in the faith, obviously had questions about how do I know? How do I know? You know, what, what are, you know, the, the sun, when will I know? That sort of thing. Um, can you prove it to me? Can you show it to me? Is there proof? And we talk about as followers and as believers, there, there is one of those thresholds, if you will, that you really don't understand until your spiritual eyes are opened. You know, and we talk about this book being for believers and non-believers alike. Now, this book, as it exists today, didn't exist that way then. I don't know what the scriptures may have meant 
to the church in Corinth, but I know what Paul's teaching meant because I have a record of that, of exactly what it was. And so, you know, he talks about the spiritual understanding of God's word, whatever form, verbally, written, etc. cetera. Um, and, that, and that there is a threshold, so to speak, that is crossed spiritually in the understanding. And, and if you want to know more about what God indeed did mean, ask him. Because you are in relationship with him. And he is your teacher. He is your mentor. He is your pastor. He is your focus. And so Paul, right, like a good teacher, steers them to Christ. And says, these are the words that I can give you to be more uh, have a greater understanding, be led more to Jesus Christ. So um, that's what we, we, we talked about a lot. And we talked about it on, because I always like to talk about it on those three levels as well, individual. And I related it to parenting. You know, parents are that filter. And hopefully, it's my prayer that parents are that godly filter so much information being poured into children's lives. I mean, it's um, and, and being just, even just being able as a parent today to monitor the flow of information is crazy. And I know a lot aren't even aware of all of the media streams. And so just investing yourself in that and monitoring the flow of information is incredible, let alone now, being a godly filter and helping to build knowledge and then helping to grow wisdom in your children. So we, we, we took at that. <laughs> yeah, if I stood still at the pulpit, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, did you see me trying to get off the stool yesterday? I've made this commitment to do it this way for a little while. And I, and I sat, but I was sweating, and I was moving around, and I was thinking, I'm getting up and walking around. And then I would calm down a little bit, um, because I think, I do, I think things are very, very important um, as, the, as the word of God comes. And, and Paul sp speaks about that as well, as an individual preacher. I related it to parenting. I, I made a little side movement there, because Paul does in verse 2 about what it means to be an individual preacher and be preaching with the Spirit of God. Good morning, Stacy, and, and, and saying those things. It's When I first came to you, I, I have it here still from yesterday. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very, very plain. Rather than using um, clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. And any preacher will tell you um, that when they invest in that way, regardless of the amount of research, regardless of how that research is conducted, per, you know, Obviously, provided it's orthodox, all this different thing, it's a given. There comes a point in time when your preaching will be only words. It will be another workshop. It will be another teaching unless you invest and submit to the Holy Spirit. And every, anybody who preaches God's word understands that feeling. It is both exhilarating and exhausting. It is a sense of being in a tunnel, hyper-focused. And then there is a sense when it is completed that you don't know what you said. Um, those sorts of things all happen. And when, and when it does happen, it is absolutely amazing and incredible and wonderful. And I know that I've got a lot of my pastor friends checking this out right now. And I know you know what I'm talking about. I'd love to hear your comments on that. But so I talked about parenting. I talked about that as a preacher as well. I talked about it in, in terms of our relationships 
as a, as a, uh, as a church body, right? Because those are the three levels on which I, I try to bring the word in terms of how it can apply, right? I want it to apply to we as individuals and our individual contexts. I'm always talking about that. Our family structures, our work, those environments in which we move through each and every day. What does the word look like in that context as you live it and speak it? And then what does the word look like here as a church body? And are we investing? Are we, in, are we, are we submitted as we claim to be individually? Are we submitted as a congregation? Are we submitted to the Lord's leading? All right, and what does that look like and sound like and feel like and all of those things? And then we talk about the church worldwide. What's next? And how can not only this church body grow, but the church body grow? When we leave here, I'm always saying to you guys and I'm always saying to the church, you go and change the world. But I can't, Pastor. What do you want me to do? I want you to do whatever God asks you to do. I want you to be kind to the next individual that's not kind to you. I want you to, um, I always relate to, um, you go out to lunch after church, that that very harried and... Um, and uh, a server that is working very diligently, tell him or her that it's okay to slow down for you, that you're gonna be okay. You understand how blessed you are to be eating this in a, in, you know, just chill, you're okay. Those sorts of things. I want you to, every time that you're asked to express the living gospel, express it and not be afraid. Right, those individual situations that come to you and they're very, very difficult, change your way of thinking. The Lord, you really trust me with this situation? Thank you. I submit to you. You see what I'm saying? You can change the world. You beginning with your world, if you will. And I always keep saying it, two and a half billion Christians actually acted like two and a half billion Christians. Just saying. Holy Spirit gives you the best part in the moment than what you could have dug for in the Bible preparation. Oh, yes, 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 yes. In the moment, uh, what she's saying is that inspiration comes and you say things or uh, you present things that didn't come through all of the preparation that you did. Yes, absolutely, 100%. And, and Stacy and, and folks here at Churchtown know that more than one time he has thrown out the sermon that was prepared um, and given a different word to us. And that is exhilarating, terrifying, um, and wonderful when that occurs and, and just trying to be submitted. I use that word all the time. So, so that's what we talked about yesterday in terms of wisdom. Um, and we talked, I guess I talked for a good long while on the stool there. So, uh, but anyway, that's what we talked about. We sang some great hymns of the church. No, ch church. Actually, yesterday we sang um, Above All. We sang Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. We sang Here I Am, Lord, all on the guitar. So... Uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun to be able to stand up here and lead that as well and, and belt it out. So, you think so? I mean, the plan is so simple yet so effective. You talk about multiplication and the power of exponential multiplication. There it is. The Lord's working it. You, tell, you remember that commercial? Tell two people and they tell two people and they tell two people and pretty soon, boom. So scripture clearly teaches that not everybody is going to submit and believe. Scripture clearly teaches that not everybody is going to be what we call a Christian. But scripture clearly teaches that everybody is to know that Jesus Christ is alive. That's our job. So don't tell me about that, that, that poor soul in the middle of some country that's never heard of the word of Jesus Christ, is he condemned to hell? 
According to scripture, yes, and it's not God's fault, it's ours, because we haven't been there to tell him about Jesus Christ. So, you can eat an elephant as long as you do it one bite at a time. Who wants to eat an elephant? Andrew, that is so politically incorrect. Elephants are endangered. What are you trying to say? No, I understand what you're saying. You take that, you know, the, 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 the mile of a, uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with just one step. You can eat an elephant if you eat them one bite at a time. All of that. I mean, it's true, but we don't necessarily envision ourselves as being a part of that, do we? In, in my mega church here, uh, you know, I understand that it is one person at a time, one conversation at a time. This church's DNA is built around that. It's built around that. And I've, and, and I've grown, helped, I've grown into that. And I hope we've grown into that. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, is it important to you? Is it important to you? We're commanded to love. We're commanded to love one another as a body. And we're commanded to love, right? John 17 talks about that as well. Loving the, the world, as we say. But more often than not, that world is going to come to you one broken, lost soul at a time. One situation at a time. <clears throat> which is actually one opportunity at a time. So, yeah. You know, the, the Billy Grahams of the world, the true evangelists can gather 75,000 in a stadium. But chances are, you and me, we're going to have those three conversations this week. Three opportunities for conversations this week. Will we take them? So, there you go, kids. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, I'll check in with you, I guess, you know. Uh, old Shaky uh, is going to go out and about today. Excuse me. My coffee. Woo! <clears throat> <clears throat> Does anybody have anything else for the good of the order this morning? I know there's some crazy football games yesterday. I didn't watch all of them, but I, um, I watched the first part kind of the middle part, actually, of the Steelers game, and then we were doing other stuff. And then I caught the very back end of the Vikings game. And I remember poor Olivia. I was distracted because um, it was the end of the game, and they were going back and forth and back and forth. And Olivia calls, and I, you know, I, I should have put all of my focus on my daughter who's calling from college, but I didn't. So <laughs> I was like, you know, she's like looking at me and I'm like, oh, and, the, and they went back and forth. And then New Orleans kicked that field goal. Um, you know, you gave a, you gave Drew Brees, Hall of Famer, a buck twenty nine. Yeah, you're going to lose. And so they went down, they kicked the field goal. And then you give Case Keenum, whatever it was, twenty nine seconds. No, you're going to lose. You know what I mean? Because he's Case Keenum. And then they, that, that play, you know, that, that play and. I just wanted to take that rookie cornerback, and I just wanted to, oh, you know that feeling as a coach? There is no, in no way, shape, or form, I know that that person was never coached to ever try to tackle anybody that way. There was just, what if, for whatever reason, he put his head down and he dove at his legs, and that is something that we try to break sophomores and freshmen in high school of doing, and... He landed on his feet, and he took off, and that was that. So I was like, whoa, did you see that? She's like, Dad. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. So, oh. He bought black-rimmed glasses. Oh, did you see them? Did you guys happen to notice? I'm looking for a copy of it. Did you happen to notice on the church bulletin? Did you happen to notice them? Look. The glasses. Now, I didn't try this, but I brought over because I bought black rimmed glasses at the dollar store. Um, these were actually like $3 a piece. So no more of these. They break too easily. 
I, brought, I bought these black plastic rimmed glasses at the dollar store. I have them everywhere. And I brought a pair over with me yesterday. And people thought I did it because and I didn't even know. So anyway, uh, hey, that's it from Churchtown this morning. If you've got more comments, uh, comment. I got Hey, thank you for sharing this stuff. I got two more friend requests from folks who check in friends of yours that now check in with turning on the lights throughout the course of the day. So keep on sharing it. We really appreciate that. Um, and I think it's neat when people send me a message and say, hey, how did you know I was going through this? Why would you speak on that topic today? It, well, I don't, right? And your friend who actually shared it didn't, but he does. And so, you know, that's, those things actually happen, folks. So anyway, that's it. We love you guys. Uh, let me just uh, pray over you today. Um, all, everybody who's here this morning, Father God, thank you. I'm going to stop walking around and making them sick, Lord. Um, that only happens during church. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, Father, thank you so much. I pray that through this cold day that everybody is uh, safe and warm, doing your will, living your word. Thank you. Thank you for the healing that is taking place spiritually, emotionally, physically. All right? Thank you so much as we intentionally today submit ourselves to your will. So change your thinking, people. Take a moment and truly submit yourself to his will. The power is unbelievable. The power that is based, all right, your first love, Jesus Christ, your salvation, your relationship with him, and, and the power of Holy Spirit that stems from that. Oh, my. Invigorating, life-giving, real life. I want everybody to experience that. I want everybody on earth to experience that. So let's do our job, church, right? So may God's grace just abound in your life. May you recognize that and may he live in you and through you. The mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. So you guys are awesome. And we will check in with you tomorrow. Um, Wednesday morning word is up and running this week. And, well, we have choir here at Churchtown this week. So uh, we're getting back in action. The Bible reading project begins in a couple weeks. So we'll keep you posted on all of that. Peace, guys. Have a great day.